No, there is a pressure to have kids. It's a very hard thing. You know, when you haven't got children, everyone you know who's got children come around, they don't, don't, don't they lay it on with a fucking trowel? They, when are you going to have a baby? Look at us, we've got a baby. We're so happy. We're a real family now, not two lost individuals just wandering through space, wondering about the meaning of it all. We're so happy. It's the most lovely thing in the world. You'd make nice parents as well. Why don't you do it? So in the end, you have kids as well. And the same people come around the next day. So it's fucking hard, isn't it? <laughs> See how you bloody like it. <laughs> well, I bought my kids a, a Kinder Egg the other day, on Sunday, last Sunday. Uh, well, one each, actually. And, um, well, things are going well. I think they deserve to... <laughs> Well, the success. Um, but I did, I bought my Kinder Egg, it's three surprises in one, uh, it's in the advert, you know, I, I, I was intrigued, you know. <laughs> it's a delightful child, that isn't it? It's a good role model for everyone, that little child on that advert, it's a nice one. I want something chocolatey! <laughs> With a surprise inside! I was, uh, I was intrigued about the, the Kinder Egg thing, because I wanted to know the three. Now, I've tried counting the surprises in a Kinder Egg, right? And I've got to admit now, I'm not up to three yet, I have to say. I have tried. Now, I accept that surprise is a relative factor, that what is a surprise to a small child is not necessarily going to be a surprise to an adult. That's a given in my equation. For instance, surprise number one, the inside of the egg is white. Hmm? <laughs> hey! <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm being facetious, I'm being facetious. They, they love it, you know, they'll give you a song and dance for that, you'll get 20 minutes of sheer joy, you get a bloody river dance out of them for that. They go, oh, no, the other thing is white. Oh. <laughs> they love it, right? The surprise number two, there's a toy inside. Fair enough, that, that I accept as a surprise. That's a good thing. That's a good... Surprise number three, this is where I get lost on the count, right? Surprise number three, there are no more surprises. What? <laughs> surprise number three, the outside of the egg is brown, but, you know... <laughs> It has to be for surprise number one to work, really, if you think about it, you know? And I do think about these things. You know what surprise number three should be? You know it should be? A cigarette. That's what it should be. <laughs> no, when kids have had chocolate, they need something to bring them down. Just a notch. Just a notch, you know. That's great, Dad. Can I have a light, please? Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> They're going to have adult Kinder Eggs before you know it. I bet that'll happen. You'll open up a little, little adult surprise will jump out, a little tube of hemorrhoid cream or something. <laughs> oh, lucky me. Yeah, I only say that, actually, because I was reading one at the back of uh, one of these magazines. There was a, an advert for, for hemorrhoid cream, and it said, Money back if not delighted. <laughs> I thought, well, why ever would I be delighted, you know, <laughs> given the circumstances? You know, I, I've sent off this cream because I'm walking around with the Maltesers coming out my asshole. <laughs> Even if this stuff works, I'll just be back to normal, so don't get your hopes up, you know what I mean? <laughs> No, but I, I digress. My, my two-and-a-half-year-old, so, so lovely. I love this age. So inquisitive, so, so full of it. She gets up at, like, 5.30 in the morning, and fuck knows why, because she has nothing to do, I can tell you. <laughs> I looked through her diary. Nothing. Just no, no entry for days on end. Nothing at all. She likes an early start. She gets downstairs, you know, she likes to... She's very troubled by milk and how it arrives on the doorstep in the night. She's very... She won't accept it's a friendly arrangement, do you know what I mean? She'll she, she get downstairs, she opens the door. Oh, God, the milk monster's been hurt dear. Let's sort that one out. I don't want any fucking milk. <laughs> and now her quest at the moment is to find a bouncing egg from the fridge, right? This is what, oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I blame myself because we had a birthday party and we invited um, uh, an entertainer, a children's entertainer, Coco the Clown comes, right? He's a um, complete genius, very funny guy. And he, no, he turns up at the door, he's just a normal looking bloke with a suitcase. And he comes straight past me, goes into the lavatory with his suitcase, comes out and, you know, it's Coco, incredible. But anyway, and the, and the final trick of the day is he's juggling with eggs. This is the thing. And the kids are loving it and clapping along and la, 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 la. And then, of course, he drops them all and they bounce everywhere. <laughs> yeah, thanks very fucking much, Coco. <laughs> Coco the arsehole. <laughs> Back to the toilet, Coco. I, 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 you know, and now, ever since, my small one, she's just, she's just downstairs in front of the fridge every morning. And, no, no, no. But that's it, I live in chaos, I have to say, I do. I don't mind admitting that, I live in chaos. We, we're messy people. I don't do any housework, I can't be asked. I, you know. My wife is Lazy Spice. <laughs> she is, she's, she's one of the band, but she never shows up for anything. She's never even been photographed. She's so fucking lazy. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'm like, I, got my, I got the dog, I got the cat, I've got the two kids. I've got this dog who's 10 months old. Very sweet dog, lovely little puppy thing. Really. You know what he likes to do? Shall I tell you? He's very sweet, this thing. He, um, I'll tell you now, he, uh, he likes to fuck teddies. <laughs> it's endearing, isn't it? Isn't that sweet? Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, yes, he likes to fuck a teddy from time to time. They, they all, they, that's the bit they don't tell you in the book, you know what I mean? They, by the way, they do like to fuck a teddy, right? And he's in love with a panda at the moment that we got from a school fate. And what bothers me about the whole thing is he, he, he likes to do it in front of people. <laughs> that upsets me, that bit of it, you know? Because I, mean, I reckon if that was my little fetish, I'd wait until everyone was out of the house, you know? <laughs> okay, have a nice day out. Yeah, bye. Okay, call cool before you get back. Okay, bye. <laughs> Right, where's that fucking teddy bear? <laughs> <laughs> and he'll wait until we've got people round and we're having a drink, we're all round together, and it's his contribution to the evening. He kind of looks at me and says, I'll just go and get my teddy. I'll be right <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I, I'm, I'm flushing, you know, I, I, Christ knows how the panda's feeling, you know, and, <laughs> and he'll bring it right in front of everyone, right in the sun. He starts going, uh, you know, I got like my parents round. They go, what a funny dog you've got. <laughs> I don't know where he gets it from. He's doing positions and stuff on it now. He's, he's getting all sophisticated. He's going, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's kind of licking his ear at the same time. I, he's, he's, he's whispering at it. You are great, baby. You are great. <laughs> I swear to God, the panda's expression has changed as well. I swear. It's here. He used to be such a, a happy-go-lucky little guy when we got him back from the school fair. And he's now got that look on his face, just fucking put me on the bonfire, you know? <laughs> if you care, put me on the bonfire. I am a soft toy, not a sex slave. <laughs> well, that's the thing, you know, that, that's a sad thing. I mean, everyone said you won't like having a dog. They're messy, dirty, dirty animals. You won't like it, and they poo everywhere. And then you've got to clear up. You know, of course you clear up, because otherwise your house starts to stink. It's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> I don't have a problem with doing that. I don't have a problem with doing that because, you know, I've changed nappies. For five years I changed nappies. I always think when you've had that fingernail experience, you know, you know you're immune, aren't you? You know what I mean? It's that moment in your life, uh, that disgust that comes not from here where you go, Egh! you know, no, but from here where you just go, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like three o'clock in the morning you're doing Elvis impressions in your pyjamas somewhere in the house. <laughs> if someone had a machete, you just cut it off, baby, cut it off. Oh. So I, I didn't have a problem with that. I could do that. I don't have a, I can clear. But what I do have a problem with uh, about clearing up after my dog is he seems to think it's funny, you know. <laughs> he enjoys that moment of the day when I do that for him. And I, I find it humiliating. He's like, we go out in the common together. He does his little number. He goes, he, kind of, he looks at me. Yeah, I'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, he calls over his friends. Come on, come on, come on. All his doggy friends. Come on, come on, look what he does. It's so funny. <laughs> You do one as well, see if he gets yours. I, 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 he's collecting it. I don't know, he keeps bags of the stuff. I don't know what he does. Come out tomorrow night if you want, eh? Meet Panda. Great. <laughs> that's great, that's great. That is, that's my dog is a panda's pimp. That's nice, isn't it? You know, so he's now taken a hanging around outside the front door. He's got a Rolex on. He's, he's, he's you know, yeah, you want to come in and meet Panda? Come on, one bonio. You go. Uh,